Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pilates at Swarthmore. So we're continuing here in the fall 2022 series of workshops. And I just wanted to let you know that this is a hybrid class. So I'm both teaching to Zoom and then also to people who are here. They'll probably be wandering in and out during this. So if I lose my focus with you, you understand. But here we go. So because it's the beginning of the semester, we're starting sort of with some of the basics and reviewing some of them as we work through the Pilates exercises. So we're going to begin by sitting near the front of your mat. These are that we are grounded and we'll roll back into your Pilates upper back curl. Begin by sitting upright right on top of your sit bones, collarbones wide. And of course you're looking ahead, I'm looking at the screen. And we'll then start to pull my elbows up so you can see my spine. And you sink behind your sit bones, you're curling the low back into the mat. Your hands will slide along the back of your thighs to lower yourself gently inch by inch one vertebra at a time into the surface of the mat. We're going to stop when we get to the tip of the shoulder blades and then pull one knee into your chest, wrap your hand around the back of the thigh, and then we pull the other leg in, tabletop legs, pull yourself a little deeper with your arms coming up to really feel this upper abdominals work and squeeze the legs together. You can stay here and then extend the arms forward, start pumping the arms up and down. For hundreds, we inhale for five beats of the arms, exhale for five more. Ideally, 10 breaths, 10 sets of these. Um, give you a secret I never count, but try to just look at the clients and see how they're doing. Now, you can stretch the legs further out and up if you want a little bit more work. If your hamstrings are really tight, the legs will go down lower. If it's too much for your low belly and your back, you just bend them slightly. You can also, the other direction, you need your feet grounded and then use your hands to keep pulling yourself up a little higher. An easier option here for the shoulders and the neck would be to take a ball behind your upper back or even underneath your head. So you keep sort of the feeling of rounding the spine forward at the upper extremities here. Choose your angle. You don't have to choose and stay. You can choose and change. Eventually, the legs go out to a place where you really feel the low abdominals start to work hard here. And you're breathing completely, filling the lungs with the inhale, emptying the lungs with the exhale. Let's just go for one more breath. Reach long through the fingertips, squeeze the legs tight together, and then go ahead and pull the knees in, lay your head down, maybe lower the feet and extend the arms out to the side. And then, because your abs are probably burning a little bit, we'll let the knees slide over to the right as you turn it into the left. Exhale, pull back to center, and the nose, and then the knees slide to the left as you turn your head and look right. Exhale, back to center here. Just a couple more, so you can rock from side to side across your sacrum. Getting a twist in the waist. This will stretch both the abdominal wall and muscles in your back. And if you really keep the arms open and press the back of your hips to the floor, you'll also get a nice chest opening here. If it feels like your neck is a little straight, it, which is quite possible if your um, chest is tight, you could always add a slight pad into your hip. Now we're going to bring the legs back to center and then extend the legs forward for roll up. I'll demo just the regular version here. Arms lift to the ceiling. And then you might take them back as far as you can without overarching the rib cage. You want to keep the natural arch at your waistline. Bring the arms forward, start to lift your head, neck, and chest. Exhale, pick up your ribs, and then dive forward. Suck the waist back as you round over your legs here. Again, tight hamstring people will need to bend the knees a little bit. Just be sure you're still feeling the stretch in your back and in your hamstrings. Now you roll back slowly, your tail moves forward, but imagine it lifting through the legs, like a light beam going up the wall in front of you, try to lay yourself down with control one vertebra at a time, and then reach back, the arms go to the ceiling, the head sinks into the ground, and you can stretch the arms back as much as you can without changing the spinal curves. Now we'll lift again. If this is hard for you, and if you just start a Pilates, it very well can be, you can have the option of using a fair band around your feet. So you would take a wide band, place it there, and then as you pull back, the arms are forward, and you keep pushing forward with the feet as you articulate your spine down, 
We'll lay one vertebra down at a time, one inch of your spine down at a time. Go all the way down, the head lays back, and then you come up. If you think the bend, you probably want to bend the elbows wide and then back as you pull your body forward. It is more difficult for guys with more weight in their chest and their shoulders. Sometimes they'll need like an extra weight over their ankles to keep the lips rounded. And then continuing, we're just going to start with an inhale and exhale construction. Now you can change the angle of your arms so that you're really challenging your core. So this is an appropriate exercise for people all different levels, right? If you're newer at this, the arms start low. You can even slide your hands down your legs to help you rise. And then come forward, set the belly back. It's not only a hip hinge, hip hinge it's also a rounding of the low back to stretch the area by your sacrum. And then to go back down, again, if you're newer at this, your hands can slide along your legs or even the floor. Of course, you can use the bed. More advanced, the arms lift higher. And you may find that as you're going down, you may need to lower the arms a little bit to maintain perfect control of your spine sinking one vertebra at a time into the ground. And then you two arms behind you. Let's just do one more at whatever level works for you. To bring the arms forward with the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, pull yourself up. Keep the exhale flowing as you suck the waist back. Pull the belly back into your spine a third as you jump forward. Reach out through your heels for more stretch in the back of your legs. And you're coming back. The collarbones wide so that the shoulders are crunching up by your ears. There you go, very good. And then bring it back down slowly, working equally on the right and left side of your body to lay yourself all the way down here on your mat. And then circle the arms around and forward. Good work. So here we're going to take that bare band and place it around your right foot for the single leg circles and stretches. So if you can start laying down, or if you want to start sitting up, you would place the band around the right foot, hold onto the band, reach the leg out, and that's sort of the counterweight, the counterbalance, you can push into it as you roll your spine into the ground. And then you would lift that foot up to the ceiling, get the stretch where you want it. Hamstrings tight would mean that the leg would be forward at an angle. You can stretch the leg up and bend the knee as necessary to get the appropriate stretch in the back of the leg. And here we go. So first, slide your elbows forward and down. Right, that moves the shoulders away from the ears so your neck is long and your breath is easy. And to do a soft point for the ball of the foot, it's the part right above the toes. And just enjoy that stretch here into the back of your leg. Now we begin by circling the leg. We inhale and bring the leg across the body. There's an internal rotation at the femur, the top of the leg. And then reach low, exhale, rotate the leg externally. So the leg is drawn in a circle in the air. And we're trying to reach out into the band using the support of the band to find more length in the leg muscles, more ease and freedom in the joints. And at the same time, feeling that the body is working to stay grounded here, particularly across the hips. So you anticipate before the leg moves to the left, you press down to the right hip. And then you exhale all the way around. Now push down to the left side of the body so it moves out to the right. And you lift the leg high to the ceiling. So we breathe here, a deep, short inhale and a long exhale. So the abdominal wall knits together as you bring the leg up to the ceiling and reach again. You push it forward into the foot, stretching the strap and anchoring your upper arms into the floor so you get a little work in your triceps. Let's go for one more. Inchally rotate, push forward long, just skim the ground. Come out to the side and lift it up high. Now pause here and we're going to reverse the circles. So you open the leg a little externally and then take it to the right. This is a little harder because the breath is not quite as supportive. We start at the top with an inhale, reach out into the band, exhale, reach long. Try to reach the foot further and further out in a circle in the air around you as if you're drawing a spiral that, so that the foot's path is further and further from the hips with every repetition. Reach here, hi there. You know what, it's a little confusing. So apparently there's two different times listed. So, but you, please start with us, that would be great. This class is hybrid, so the camera's only on me. And we're just doing one more circle here, stretch long, and then exhale all the way around, drag it over and lift it on top. 
And let's take the, the fair bed, the ends of it in your right hand, and the blade out to the side. I'm going to rock the pair a little side to side. So I would recommend that you grab one of those orange pads because they're more padded. You, know, you never want to just use like a yoga pad here because of the rolling exercises that we do. And then there's a small ball and a fair bed on the bins just in front of you. Uh, yes, to your left, good. Pick the color you like. And then also one of the, um, the green bands because they don't have anything. Super, and then we'll lift the leg up. And you can take this across. Now, as long as you can see me and I can see you, that's perfect. Is there anything I should know about the body before you start? Uh, no. Okay, have you tried Pilates before? I tried it once. Super, that's great. Like a couple years ago. And then pull the hip down, lift the leg up to the ceiling, and then you'll pull the knee into your chest, embracing it. And then we take the band off the foot. So of course, you came in halfway through this exercise. So um, let's do maybe one side at the end of class. I'll help you go through the other side. All right. So then release the right leg forward, stretch it out, and you'll feel you should feel a difference in the two sides. The right side feels a little more relaxed and a little more dropped to the ground. Just see what I mean after you do the, the other side. So we'll pull the left knee into your chest, place the fair band, the center of the band. Around the ball, we're going to arch the two or three, and then you lift the foot up to the ceiling. You might want to wrap the band around the hand for a little more security, and then reach the elbows down long and low. We point the foot slightly, reach up to the ball of the foot, not too much point through the toes, because sometimes that'll make it if you cramp, we don't want that. And we keep the pelvis rounded and level here. We start by circling the leg across to the right, so the left leg needs to right first across the body, go low over the other foot, rotate the leg externally out to the side and bring it up to the ceiling. So basically you're just like drawing a big circle in the air here with your leg and you breathe through it. It start, the circle starts in and at the top, you inhale to start the circle and you exhale all the way around out to the side and up to the top. The shorter the inhale and then the longer the exhale, the more you're gonna feel the abdominal muscles contract the lowest abdominal muscle that transverses, one of its main functions is forced exhalation, and that really tightens up that inner corset for us all. So we breathe into it, inhale, and you stretch while holding the opposite hip grounded, right? So when the left leg is out to the left, the right hip is heavy. When the left leg crosses to the right, the left hip stays grounded. I hope I got that right. Just circle around and then reach it up. Basically, you're trying to keep the pelvis rounded, like it's filled with sand and weighted here into the mat. We're gonna to come to the top, come all the way up and then reverse the circles. Enjoy the stretch you feel in the back of your leg as you lift it high. Rotate externally and take the left leg out to the left, hold the right leg and hip grounded. Circle the leg across the body and out, up to the ceiling and reach out long. Keep pushing forward into the foot and anchoring down through any part of your body that's connected to the ground. You might think like you're welded to the floor or maybe like stuck there with your little glue and just breathe into this as you move. It's nice and slow, nice and smooth. Of course, any movement that you do in Pilates, it should look great in your body. If not, stop. We can think of a modification for you or you know, just maybe try it smaller, slower, smaller range of motion is really helpful. So at the top, now let's pause and we'll take both ends of the bed in your left hand. If you want a little bit of extra help, the right hand can also hold further at the end, but rotate the leg out to the left. I just want to rotate it. You might take your right hand on your right hip bone to push that into the floor, because you don't want to tip the pelvis. You don't want to tip the body just because the weight of the leg is out there. And then just gently rock the leg a little towards your shoulder and away. The other leg stretches forward down, directly out of the socket along the floor. Exhale, and you pick the left leg up, use your inner thigh, and we bring it across the body. Now here, extend the left arm out, palm is up, back and head to the ground, and spiral the torso off the back. You're lifting the hip, the waist, some of the ribs, but not the shoulder blade, and the leg stretches across the room, then rotate it internally to get even more stretch into the glute and the low back. 
It should feel great. I want it to feel amazing for you. If the hamstrings are tight, you soften the knee a little bit, but it's just bend it slightly. And then we pull the hip down to lift the leg up to the ceiling. And now fold the knee into your chest. The band comes off, place it at your side, and embrace that leg into your chest. If it's um, a problem for your knee, you would hold the back of the thigh, otherwise, pull it onto the shin. And then release that leg forward, stretch it out. Maybe give both legs a little shake and then let them relax. You might notice that both of the legs look slightly rotate externally, so the knees and the toes point out here. But definitely that leg is longer and feels more connected to the ground, more relaxed overall, but also more energized and stress-free, tension-free. Okay, so perfect. So we'll pull the right knee into your chest again. Take your hands easiest to the back of the thigh, more difficult to the shin. And then pull the left leg in and lift the left leg up. We're going to rock forward and up to come up to sitting. So you inhale to lift your head, chin to chest, push both legs forward. And you pull yourself like, hey, that was good. Like a natural. How great is that? All right, now rolling like a ball. So here we can use the ball between the thighs. If you're at home and don't have one, get one when you can. It's a useful tool here. It's good to have props because it helps you feel things more and connect into your own body. But we're bending the knees. The edges of your feet are together, and the ball is between the inner thighs. So below the knees, you don't want to push sideways into a joint. And easier here is taking the hands to the back of the thighs, more difficult to the shins. I'm going to show up first with my hands to my thighs. So we curl the tail up as you pull your waist back to create a rounded C curve spine, and the elbows go forward and up a little bit so the shoulder blades widen on your back. That helps you pull the rib cage back between the scapula. And then balance point on your sacrum, lift your feet. You're going to press the legs forward into your hands and your hands back into your legs to firm up the arms, but also firm up the abs. And then we lift the tail. When you roll, be sure you don't go on your neck. So we inhale, we lift the tail, roll back to the shoulder blades. Exhale, come forward and up. If it's not comfortable for your back, get more padding. Body's pads are thicker than yoga mats. And often at home, people will use a yoga mat on top of like a nice thick carpet. I'm going to change to the hands to my shins, tighten up the position a little bit. Inhale, roll back. Exhale, breathe and come forward. The exhale helps you lift. So inhale and you keep the inhale going till the tip of the blades touch the mat, but in the air, exhale to come forward. Just keep looking down at your own abdominal wall, particularly the navel. So your head never falls back and just slaps into the floor or behind you. You're trying to make the back as round as possible. So as you inhale, think you're breathing into it like you breathe into a balloon or a tire and inflate it. Inhale, inflate the back, roll on it. Exhale, come up to balance. You're doing great. It's, it's very useful. Pretend you're about six years old and play as you do. So inhale, smile, and you're back. Exhale, you lift, come up. Good job here, excellent. We'll take the ball to the side. We're gonna continue into the first three of the app series. In yesterday's class, we just did the first two. Each of these, um, of the five abdominal series, they get progressively harder for your core. So here we go. We start by bringing the right hand to the right shin, right above the ankle, the left hand on the right shin below the knee. And we pick up the leg and curl the tail up, roll back very slowly, into the ground, place your spine right down the middle of the mat and lift the left leg. You could just split off the ground or could be vertical, any place that kind of works for you. And we pull the knee in as tight as you can. Again, if you have a knee issue, hold on to the thigh so that the knee is more open and not compressed, otherwise you pull it in tight. And inhale and switch the legs. If the right leg is forward, the left leg pulls in, left hand to the ankle, right hand to the knee. And we switch, you stay in the upper curl, if you need an assist, you can place the ball under your shoulders or under your head. Or you could even lay your head down. So we breathe, inhale for one side, exhale for the other. Legs stretch forward and pull back with pistons working here in their own plane of motion. And every time you pull the leg in, you're pushing down with the hands and up with the shin. So that you feel a deep connection into your arm muscles, but then also into your upper abdominals. Can you feel that when the hands push down? You should feel a lot of muscle right under the chest wall engage. We're going to end with the left knee in, pull both knees in, lay your head down, rest your feet to the mat. Open the arms and just rock your knees to one side, head to the other. 
just release any tension you might feel in your throat and in your neck. That will go away over time as you strengthen into your abdominals and your core. And also as you come higher up into your upper breath curls, so the neck is more vertical. So here we're pulling both these into your chest. Use your hands to your thighs to pull yourself up off the ground, balance on the tip of your scapula, and now double leg stretch. So you pull the knees in closer, bring your hands to your shins, squeeze the legs together, bring your thighs to your toes. We inhale and the arms and legs go up on a high reach, reach the fingers, reach your feet. feet. Circle the arms wide as you exhale and embrace the shins into your chest. So the arms and legs, they start going vertically, and then you circle and embrace. As you advance the movement, the legs go forward a little bit, the arms go back a little bit, but only to the point that you don't change the curve of your spine. If you take the arms so far back that you flat into the back, that's kind of dangerous for your back. So we don't want to do that. The challenge is to take the arms and legs away just enough to really feel your core engagement without changing the spinal position. You want to do this appropriately to get the maximum work for your adjustment of time. So you reach and stretch, pull everything in, and then lay your head down, lower the feet. And now here, just a little break for your neck and for your abs. We'll open the knees out like in a butterfly or frog position. They actually rotate and then close them except here. And do that again. Inhale, open the knees, roll from the flat foot to the outer edges of the feet, and then exhale, pull that back to center. One more like this. That's great. And here's another thing that's helpful when you're learning Pilates or re reintegrating your practice into your daily routine. We're going to come up to sitting and roll back to your upper up curl. So that allows you the chance to really find your best upper up curl. So come up to sit. That's good. By the way, I'm doing a hybrid class, which is why I'm sort of talking to you and then also to the screen. So here we go. Pandemic rules. <laughs> so, okay. So, what we can do here is hold onto the back of your thighs, slowly roll back. So, you curve the tail up, you scoop the belly into your spine, and you go down over your glutes. Your hands can slide towards the sit bones, down to your hips, down to your waist, to the base of the ribs, and you stay there before you hit the shoulder blade tips or maybe to the tips. And then pull one leg in, then the other. Squeeze the legs together, use your arms to pull you a little deeper into your upper up curl. And then let's extend the right leg up to the ceiling and bring your hand as high as you can towards the calf, towards the ankle. The left leg reaches that wall. So this is called scissors. We're going to do a scissor split here. So you inhale, one leg lowers, the other one lifts, the calf's in mid air. That's good. And reconnect to your abs as you come up high. Now switch the legs again. It's an inhale for one leg and an exhale for the other. Reach long through the leg, your gaze focus down your midline. Just breathe as you move. Again, if your hamstrings are tight, as you lift the leg, you're probably bending the knee a little bit, but then try to straighten the as it goes down. Again, you're working right in the same line as your hip socket here. So the foot goes straight out. You don't want the leg to wander either across center or laterally. We're going to end with the left leg up, bring the right leg up to beat it. Support your head with your hands and then pull the knees, lay yourself down. Okay, that was great. So that's the first three out of the five app series. We'll continue to learn a different one each week. And now let's come on up to sit it. So you can pull one leg in, extend the other out, and roll forward it up. We're going now into seated spine stretch. So here, Again, if you're tight in the back line of your body and your hamstring or, and or your hamstring, you might bend the knees to really sit vertically up on your sits bones. When you sit upright, there should be a natural curve like at your waistline that's an indent. If you find that when you sit with the legs extended, you're kind of slumped back into a rounded C-shaped spine, you need to elevate your hips off the ground or bend the knees until that works for you. So coming up, we extend the arms forward. Or you can elevate yourself like sitting on the other block of a book, even like a small stool with a chair. And we, we're going to curl down on an imaginary wall. So the first thing, look at the horizon. 
widen the collarbones, your shoulders fall behind you, and arms are extended forward, floating here, like the floating on the surface of a pool of water. And now we look down our nose, tip your chin to your chest, and you feel that you're getting pulled from the back of the skull out over and down to stretch the neck. And then you move through the upper back, the mid back, the low back, sucking the waist back as you dive forward. You're bringing your hands out over your toes in that direction anyway. And then you're bringing your head down as if you're going to drop your head down between your knees. That's good. And you lift your belly so you have a rounded curved spine here instead of just like into your hips. Now push down through your legs and zip the back up and imagine a wall here so you sink through the tail. Your back muscles pick you up inch by inch. You stack your spine. And Rebecca, we started out at the horizon and then look down. We're exhaling all the way out, over, and down. So you dive forward. At the same time as the head goes forward, you start to think of pulling your waist back. The back is going to broaden, the front's going to shorten and narrow as you dive over the space here between your legs. Dive forward, stretch out your body. Here, if you flex the feet, you're going to get more stretch into the calves and the rest of the back of your legs. And then press down through your heels, press down through your systems, pull your waist back, and then lift your body slowly. Like if there was a wall behind you, you zip your back up it. And we're doing it again. Exhale all the way over and down. Be sure you start with the head and the neck first and not at your waist. We want to work from the top of the spine, successively working all the way down. So we articulate in sequence from the top of the spine to the bottom. And now coming up, we articulate the spine in sequence from the bottom of the spine to the top. So you pull it up and you gradually lift the chest, come all the way up. One nice way to think about it, if you have a friend in the room with you, they can take a ball at the top of your head and roll it down your head, over your neck, down your spine. And whenever the ball touches your back from the top to the bottom, you lower underneath it. And then imagine them holding that ball at your sacrum and then lifting the ball up your back and you pull up into the ball as it rises and your head is the last thing to go. So, so you're tall here and then look down, exhale all the way out over and down. Your body moves like a wave coming up and then over the beach, coming onto the sand here as you dive forward and low. And then you're going to feel that wave retract and get pulled back into the ocean and you come up and you want your body to feel more supported as you lift here and float here are suspended on the water. That's beautiful. And we'll just lower the arms down here. Questions and thoughts? Do you feel good? Great. Okay, so here, let's come forward. And we're going to sit near the front of the mat again. So we're going to prepare for another rolling exercise, but now we're getting a little balance work into the program. This is called open leg balance and then rocker. So we curl the tail up and we pull the waist back. It's a pelvic top. Lift the feet off the ground and find your balance point here. So again, easiest if your hands are behind your thighs. I'm going to start with the first one here. And the arms go wide and forward. Just suck the waist back and curve the back and down at your navel. The right leg extends up. So you stretch it as much as you can to feel that stretch in the back of the leg. Leg is slightly out of the diagonal, so the foot's about even with your shoulder. And then exhale and pull that leg down. And at your heels together, a slight press so that you feel a little bit of connection through your inner thighs. And now the left leg extends up. That's nice. And exhale, pull it back down. Good job. Ideally, the torso is still as you move the leg. This could take some practice. And for, again, people who are tight in the back lines of their bodies, which happens if you sit a lot, a lot, right, for work or for studying, and then pull the left down. Now here, both legs. So both legs go up and out. It's a narrow V, just the width of your shoulders. Excellent job, and then pull it back in. Now a more advanced position for the arms, your hands will go between your legs, wrap your hands around so your hands are on top of the shin. And then as you lift the legs up, the hands kind of rotate a little bit around to the outer edge. So your thumb is on top of the shin bone. And your hands are holding onto the back of the calf slightly. And then you pull the knees a little wide as the arms rotate inside the legs, inside the knees. And we do that again. So you lift it up. Your hands rotate a little bit to the outside of the legs. From here, the legs extended. 
doing great. This is love to balance. Mm -hmm. And then you pull it back in. Good. Yep. And let's just do one more. So you extend it up. So I kind of slide my thumbs on top of my shins and bring my hands around. So they're sort of holding on to the lower part of the swell of the pack. Great. Good. And then you could push the leg forward into your hand and pull your voice back to really feel that strength. Now we roll from here. Again, look at your abs. Do not let your head touch the floor. We lift the tail to go back and balance in the shoulder blades, but in the air, exhale, come forward to your balance point. Yay, you made it up. That's good. That's the main thing for the first time. So hold on. And chances are you're holding a little lower, well, closer to your center, like on the path. And you look at your abs, just suck the belly back, and lift the tail and start to move forward. Exhale forward and up. So one of the main things is, like you don't want to smack your head on the ground, right? That's not good for your brain, it's not good for your body. So you want to be sure that the movement starts with the tail lifting, so you can get a little bit of work into the lower abdominals, then go back, balance on the shoulders. Come up, oh, I almost overbalanced. And then we're just going to fold the legs and rest. So here's the thing with that too. Number one, you have to be sure that your side is sufficiently padded so it's comfortable. You have to be sure that you're really rounding your back as much as you can. And sometimes people need more padding where it's tight. Um, the other thing is that it's different. We just did rolling like a ball, which was that tighter position, right? So your body got used to a center of balance here that's different from the one that's here. So it's a little hard when you make that adjustment initially to figure out how much effort is needed and where it comes from. But that's just practice, right? So eventually this becomes easier. It's also possible people who really feel that like their legs are longer, but they're further out, that they may want to use like their fair bed and fold it at least in half, reach tight around it, and you can pull the legs up. So this would be probably with the legs together. And then, I don't know if I can do this. I haven't tried it with this, so let's see. So you lift the tail, and then you would go back, bounce on the shoulder, exhale, come up, and it gives you like an arm extension here. You can try it if you want. And if you don't have a fair band, you can use a belt. You could use your dog's leash. <laughs> but you would need something that is kind of firm. A yoga strap would also look great. Mm -hmm. So keep the legs straight. Inhale, roll back. Exhale to pull yourself forward. It's a little less secure, right, because of the flexibility of the strap. But it gives you a, a chance to try it at a different angle for your legs, which is a nice option for us all. A lot of times we do these kinds of modifications with the props because it teaches you something different about your body with every variation that you try. So um, I know there's some schools of thought that are like very strict no props ever, like, you know, do it the way Pilates intended the end result to be. But, you know, I was trained in the work considerate manner where we try to work with people's bodies as they are and then change them over time. So, okay, so that was excellent. So here we're going to lay on your backs now and do it and do an exercise called porch grip. So I recommend that for this is the first time, let's see if we get around. So we're going to roll ourselves down and again, if you want to curl down. So when you come up and down, take your time to work the floor. And then once you're down, lay your head down, and we can pull the knees into the chest, less of the feet, lift the legs up to the ceiling, maybe wrap your hands around and anchor your elbows at your side. And we want the legs as vertical as possible, like the feet should be right over the hips, right over the pelvic floor, right? And that means that if your hamstrings are tight, that you would bend the knees and pull the feet back a little bit. But go where you can and try to pull your elbows forward so your shoulders are relaxed. Look up at the ceiling. Now here, we're drawing small circles on the ceiling in the sky with your feet while keeping the pelvis grounded. So we tip the legs a little bit over to the right and then circle forward and around. Over to left, hold the right side heavy so you feel the work in your oblique abdominals come back up to the top. So you might think of starting with a circle like the size of a baseball, maybe look up to a volleyball or basketball size. Yeah and just really feel what it's like to try to hold the pelvis grounded here and level. When you draw a smaller circle like this, you'll probably feel 
that you're just sort of imprinting around the SI joints. You can feel that sacrum, that big triangular bone near the base of your spine. It shifts a little bit as your weight slightly shifts, but you're really trying to pull the outer edges of the hips grounded and down while you're doing this. And we reverse the direction each time. So okay, I said that. So my fault, apologies. If you started just in directions all in the same way, reverse it now and you'll let you go. All right, here's a different kind of option for similar exercise. So let's just start with the legs up, upright, vertical. Elbows are grounded, slide the elbows towards your waist. And then see how far can you take the legs over to the right without tipping the pelvis. And the more you press down through the left side of your body, the more you're going to feel that work in those left obliques. Exhale, pull it back to center. Now the legs are driving over to the left, and you're going to sink down through your right hip. Can you feel that really work against the weight of your legs? You want to feel your core engagement here. Well, the legs go from one side to the other. Think of dropping down through your opposite hip from the direction of the leg. And pull it back and let's do that again. So a lot of the qualities work, we're really trying to use the weight of our limbs to strengthen our center. And that means you're not just throwing your legs and your arms around, but you're working and organizing it from your core. Do you both feel this? Yeah. Now there's another way to also feel this work. And that is to think of lifting your left hip up and tilting it across the body to bring the legs over to the right. Keep the shoulders down, go as far as you can. And now exhale, you're gonna to start to pick up the right hip to bring the legs from the right back over to the left. Pick up the hip and the leg swings here. That shoulders stay down, chest is wide. Now exhale as you're moving from the left to the right. Pick up the left hip to roll across the low back. And you're picking the left hip up. It's getting pulled by the oblique muscles here. So swing the whole leg as a, as a unit, the double leg unit here. Exhale, pick up the right hip to bring the legs back through center and then over to the left. You're going to press down to the right side as the legs swing to the left through the upper back and the arm. And then exhale, let's pull back to center and use the center to move your legs. And that's a whole different feeling, right? Than just swinging the feet from side to side and wagging your tail. And it's not to say that one is always right and one is always wrong, because you can work from the ends of your body or you can work from the center. But we want to think about what we're doing, choose what you're doing, and then make your body work that way. Uh, Blythe is called to system controlology because he believed that the mind should always control the body. Um, we know that doesn't always happen, but it's sort of nice when you have that experience once in a while. Okay, so here we come up and we can roll forward and up to sitting. So, catch your thighs, lift your head back and chest, exhale, roll forward, come up to sitting here. And we're going to go into some side kicks today. So, let's lay on your side. I'm going to lay on my right side. You guys may want to turn to see, see me here. So you stretch yourself out. Um, traditionally, we prop ourselves up on our elbow. If that is a problem for your neck, you can lay the arm down, rest your head here, and it might be more comfortable if you took a folded towel or something here between your shoulder or your arm and your ear so that your neck stayed in line with your head. But you can see here that when I bring my head down, it's kind of falling down though. So ideally, I would place something there, maybe even the mat. Okay, you can hold it and do that if that was all you had. But otherwise, we're here. And you sort of press um, the top hand. So here on my right side, the left hand presses into the ground right in front of the chest. And I'm pulling my right elbow in slightly so that I feel that lift through the armpit and the engagement into the sidewall on the ground. Now, I want my tail to be in line with my shoulders. And then swing the legs forward, maybe 30, 35 degrees. Stack the legs, feet are flexed. That looks good. And then the hand presses into the floor. It's not through the fingertips, 
It could be the fist if you want it, if you need to keep a straight wrist, otherwise the hand is plus two. We pick up the top leg, that foot is of course flexed like the bottom one is, and then you swing the leg forward and you rest with the heel and you pulse one and two. Point the foot, take the leg back and pulse back one and two. So as the leg glides forward, you're trying not to lean back with the torso. And when the leg goes back, you use your glutes to pull this leg behind you, that's a hip extensor. And you're opening here without leaning the chest forward. So we flex to go forward, a pulse one, two, sometimes even three. Point, take it back, and pulse one and two. Good. Now, you want to watch that when the leg is forward, you're not falling back with the head. And you don't want to let the leg go back and you're leaning forward here with the chest. Because what that's doing, you're keeping a plank with your body over your standing leg. And what we're trying to do is stabilize the center on your sideline, which is tough. When you're moving the leg here, particularly if you're tight, either in the hip flexor or the hip extender muscles, right? So, but you're not going to stretch them unless you stabilize your core. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. And again, if this is like a little tough on like your hip bone um, or like your outer thigh, this, like where the femur comes in and then comes up and into the pelvis, there's a big bony, like point that may be a little tender when you rest on it. So always add extra padding and do it if you need it. Let's just do that one more time. So inhale, slide it forward, pulse one and two. As I bring the heel forward, I'm reaching back through my sixth bone and tail to get a little bit more stretch. Then you point the foot and press the leg back and you hold your body steady and stable here on the side. That's good, come back to center. This first one is a challenge because of the tightness of most of our legs and through our hips. Now we're going to lift the leg hip height and rotate first internally and externally. So the movement happens here from the hip socket. So if you take your edge of your hand along that crease between the pelvis and the leg, and then point the index finger in about two to three inches from the center of the pubic bones here at the front. And then you think, all right, let's rotate the leg from that point. That way you're not rotating like from your waist and moving your hip to move your leg but you're stabilizing the pelvic cap and rotating the femur on the hip socket itself. Hopefully that's clear. It's a little confusing because when we walk, the pelvic cap moves with the leg. But when we do exercises here for the leg, we want to separate what is pelvic girdle and what is leg. If you do this, you'll also feel more work into your glute. Now we're going to hold the external rotation Heel goes down, toes pointed up, knees on a slight diagonal, up on an angle here. And then point the foot. We lift the leg up to the ceiling. Your hand can press down, flex the foot, and reach heel close the space between your legs. So it's a point to lift up. That's nice. And flex to go long and down. Try to stretch, connect your heels together so you feel some length in your waistline. Let's do it once more. Point go high. And flex go down and reach. Now reverse. Flex to go up. Point to stretch down. Flex and lift. Point and lengthen away. Flex going up. Point, reach it down. The next one is called Devil Pay. These come from ballet. Uh, Joe Fly's worked with a lot of uh, George Balanchine's dancers and other dancers in New York. So we pull the leg in, pull the knee in towards the chest. Pick the foot up, the knee comes towards the armpit. You extend the leg out, you flex the foot, and you stretch the leg out and down. All this while balanced on your side and a smile on your face, hopefully. <laughs> so let's slide that in. The foot glides along the bottom leg. You pull the knee up towards your shoulder, extend the leg up, flex, and reach out and down. Now you're trying here not to roll back, right? So you just have as much external rotation as works for you and still keep the body stacked on your sideline. Let's do one more like this. Pull it in, the knee lifts up. It's on a slight diagonal, it's not vertical, unless you are like a prima ballerina yourself, which, you know, uh, not expecting anyone to, to be that here, but you never know, right? So flex and lift, take it up high, point the foot, bend the knee, and then slide the foot forward and down. Go long, reach out, flex at the end. So you lift to go up. Point the foot, bend the knee, and then you tap the toe down, and you slide the foot down the whole leg, end with the flex foot, and feel that length in your waist, and one more, go up, and bend, 
and then all the way forward and down. Now from here, lift the leg hip height and we're doing small circles here, the size of like an apple or an orange with your foot. So press through your arms, you feel that connection to your abs. And we're going to draw eight little circles here in the air. Nice and smooth, keep reaching out toward an imaginary or a real wall past your foot. You're drilling a hole in that wall. And then let's reverse. Good. You will start to feel this probably in these upper outer thigh muscles. Even lots of really good athletes, they don't necessarily train these muscles here. And actually these muscles that are holding the leg up are super important. It's one of the muscles that really helps you balance on one leg, which is super important when you're walking actually. And then let's lower the leg down. Good. And let's go ahead and flip over onto your stomach here for grasshopper. So you can overlap your hands under your forehead, shift to the floor, if this, this is nice to draw if you breathe, but this isn't going in the back. Another option would be to take your hands, palms up under your hip bone crest, and then keep your head suspended a little bit off the ground. In either case, we're going to rotate the legs externally so the knees and the toes point out. And then just pick up one leg and then lower it down. And then the other leg lifts and you lower it down. You can also do this in parallel. So when you lift the leg, you're pressing the front crest into the floor so that you don't feel this in your back, but you really feel it in your glute. Lift the whole leg up. So you're trying to lift the thigh and engage the quad, the front of the thigh bone, right? The muscle at the front of the leg to keep that knee as straight as you can. So you're not just bending at the knee to lower lift, to lower leg, right? You want to lift from the hip. This will be hard if your hip flexors are tight. It'll help loosen them and also strengthen the glutes. That's nice. Okay, now for the full grasshopper exercise, the legs are turn up. You lift both legs from your glutes and you open and close the thighs. Forehead is down. You're trying to pull the tailbone down between the legs to lengthen the low back. That's the weight of your legs. That's it. And open and close from the upper thighs. So it's really easy to think about. So the question was, what do you mean by that? Right? So it's easy to think about clapping your heels together in a part, but it feels different if you think about pulling the thighs together in a part. Just try it. So think, even just lift one leg. And then think, okay, I'm going to move the heel to one side and back, the heel to one side and back, the heel to one side and back. Lower the leg, pick it up again. Now you use your outer side to pull the leg out, use your inner upper side to pull the leg in. Outer thigh takes it out, inner thigh takes it back. Outer thigh out, inner thigh back. Can you feel that it's initiating from a different place? See, that's great. So whatever, whatever you think about for your body, your body can actually, well, actually will try to do it for you. And sometimes the things that you think are possible, if you just give the body the program, it figures out what to do, which is pretty extraordinary, actually. And you know, when you watch people for long enough, they'll be able to see where they initiate from. It's like you know, really putting your focus on anything, you can start to see things that maybe you would never expect you to see. But you can feel it almost right away, which is pretty extraordinary in itself. Okay, so let's sit back into your child's pose, and then we have to do the same series on the other side. I hope all that felt good in your body. It's a, it is a challenge to balance on your side and work those legs without moving the upper body. You all did great. And then we stack the spine from the bottom to the top and we come to the other side. So in a class, like in real life that wasn't hybrid, right? You would just flip over, but because of here, you might want to still be able to see me. So maybe have your head at the other end. You're on your right side, you want to be on your left. Or you could you could watch her, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. She's done with this with me for years, so we're close to the left. Alright, so we want to lengthen the spine here, right? 
head is either propped up on your hand or extended out on your upper arm. Stretch the legs long and try to match up your feet to give yourself a little feeling that's lifting your waist. Top hand in front, remember the legs are about 30 degrees away from the angle of your spine. And you spread your hand and push it into the ground unless you're making a fist to keep the wrist straight up here. People do things for all kinds of reasons for their bodies. So we're gonna pick the top leg up, flexing both feet again. And now slide that top leg forward, reach back through your sixth bone and tail, plus one, two. Point the foot and stretch it back, reach back and try not to lean forward. It takes a lot of core to hold you centered here on your side seam. Flex the foot and drag it forward, reach out and pulse one, two times, point, reach it back, lengthen and stretch away. You flex the double boot forward, you point to double pulse back. And the whole body is active. If we're not just moving the leg, I'm still thinking I'm pulling that left arm in towards my armpit. I'm trying to reach my head away from my shoulders. My arm is active here so that I feel the connection into my upper abdominals. And the bottom leg is pressing into the ground to help me hold my balance. Let's come back to center and lower the leg. So we lift it up. Remember, we find the crease here in the hip, about two to three inches from the center of the pubic bone. We're going to take the index finger point in, especially your hip socket is probably about two inches in from here, from your fingertip. And then rotate the leg from that point. The femoral head is like a ball here that fits into a deep socket. And we're spinning that ball on the surface of the joint in order to rotate the leg. And that will really turn on and access these muscles in the glute and in the upper outer thigh. There you go. And then lower leg down, we're in external rotation. And the hand can go back. Point the foot and lift it up. Flex the foot and reach it down. So we drag the space open between the legs and then we squeeze it tight and close. Point, pull the leg up and then flex and push it down. Now reverse, flex to lift, point, stretch it away. And you're trying to keep your waist long here so you're not shortening your waist just because you're lifting the leg. One more, flex up, point all the way down. And now for that double K, so you bend the knee, we slide the foot in. Pull the knee to the shoulder, extend the leg up, flex the foot, and reach out long and close. Drag it in, pull it in, lift up, exhale, flex and down. And work to your range, right? We all have different bodies, um, doing different things for different amounts of time, all of us. Now reverse, straight leg, flex, lift, point the foot, bend the knee in, slide it forward and down. Reach long, lift, point bend, Exhale all the way down, reach long, pull the head away from the foot and vice versa, one more. We wanna find length in the whole body to kind of knit all the connective tissue, all the fascia together for support. And we just ended with, we lifted the leg up, up high, and we threw small circles in the air, circling. And again, like before, maybe think about really working from the upper thigh to do the circles instead of just bringing the toes around in the circle here. So this work here is going to affect what happens with the whole leg. And then reverse your circles. Look straight ahead so that your neck is long. Every once in a while you can sneak a peek at what the foot's doing, but you should know what it's doing. And then we lower the leg down. And that's great. So onto your stomachs. And then Stretch for a second, press to the ground, come up into your child's pose, stretch out your back, lengthen through the arms, stretch low through your fingertips, and we're stacking the spine from the bottom to the top to come up and end our class for today. That was so good. Thank you so much for being here, whether virtually or in person at the Matchbox.